In this video, I am going to show you guys how to hand piece your hexagons together for the Chev and Hex block for Scale Builder block of the month. There are many different stitches that you can use to hand piece your hexagons together. The most popular are the whip stitch, the ladder stitch, and the running stitch. Now, I experimented with a lot of these, um, with actually all three of them, and then different ways to hold the hexagons, uh, different size needles, different size thread, different color thread, and I kind of came to the conclusion what stitch is my preferred stitch and that's the whip stitch but I figured out that I actually usually the when piecing the hexagons together they are pinched right sides together and then it is stitched here along the edge with them pinched now I found when I did the whip stitch and I did this that when I opened up my hexagons, I was able to see the stitches pretty clearly from the front, and I really didn't like that. And so that's when I tried the ladder stitch, and the ladder stitch can help eliminate a lot of the, the stitches that you will see on the front side. So that's a really great option, but it's a lot slower. And for me, I have fibromyalgia, and my hands tend to hurt really bad when I'm stitching for a long period of time. So... I like the idea of using the whip stitch because it's fast, but I didn't like that the stitches were showing up on the front. So the solution that I found to that is to take your two hexagons and butt them up against each other, and then take a piece of blue painter's tape, or just masking tape, and you're going to tape these two pieces together. So you want to make sure you can even do one side. That's probably the best thing to do. Do one side, and then stick your next hexagon on and stick it down. So that's going to temporarily hold those two together. So instead of pinching these two hexagons right sides together, I'm going to let them lay flat as I stitch them together. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and thread your needle and use a quilter's knot. Now I have two needles here. Um, I have a small one and a big one. Now I also found, because I tried both of these, that the smaller needle is easier for me to work with. I definitely suggest that you use a needle that has a sharp end. You do not want to use a needle that has a ballpoint end. Ballpoint is, is used for embroidery, but for this you want to use a sharp needle. And my preferred size is the Gold Quilting Needles um, number 9 by Clover. And it's, they're pretty tiny. They're great for applique. Um, I use these when I stitch my binding on if I do hand stitching. But for the sake of this tutorial, so that you can kind of see, I'm going to use this larger sharp needle here. It's also a gold tip clover needle. But it's about a size 20, I believe. So it's quite a bit bigger. And um, so it's a little harder to use a bigger needle, but that, that way you'll be able to see. I'm also using black thread so that you can see it more clearly on the camera. But when I stitched my hexagons together, I actually used clear monofilament thread because I was using such contrasting colors, you know, it's like for example here I'm using a light orange with a dark purple and choosing a thread that's going to match both of those is kind of hard to do. Um, a beige or um, a light gray might be kind of a good option in that case, but I just wanted to avoid that and not have to worry about switching threads, so I used the clear monofilament. Using the monofilament thread is a little bit different to work with. It's very, very thin and um, it's a polyester, so it's not going to be the same as working with cotton. It does have some weird things that happen when you're using it, and um, so you may or may not like using it. I got used to it after using it for a while. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and thread your needle through the eye, and you're going to pull out about two inches of thread, maybe yeah, so a little bit less, about two inches. Then I'm going to pinch that between my fingers, my index finger and my thumb. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to grab the tail on the other side with my opposite hand. And I'm going to lay the thread on top of my needle and pinch it together with my thumb and my index finger. So now I've created a loop here. I'm going to take my opposite hand and I'm going to wrap the thread 
around the back side because I laid the thread on the top. I'm going to go around the back side and wrap my thread around the needle about four times. Now, if you're using thicker thread, you could get away with probably two wraps. Since you're using, in this case, I'm using thinner thread, I'm going to do about four to five. Now, I'm going to push those wraps underneath my index finger and my thumb. And I am pinching those loops right now against the needle. Now I'm going to take my opposite hand and I am going to take the needle and I'm going to pull it out of my fingers. And you're going to have to kind of wiggle your thumb and your index finger to get those loops over the end of the needle. This is where our smaller needle is good too. And you're just going to pull, keeping the knot that's between your fingers now that was created with those loops tight and pinched between your fingers. Pull the thread all the way through and that's going to create a knot at the end of your thread. And this is a quilter's knot. That's a really fast way to create a knot um, when you're sewing your pieces together. So I'm ready to go. I've got my needle threaded. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one side in the corner and I am just going to take my needle up and we are, we're working on the back side of these templates. I'm going to take my needle just through the fabric without going too deep and getting the foundation template. And the first stitch is kind of the hardest because you're right there on the corner which has uh, two layers of fabric. And there we go. Let's see, having a larger needle is a bit harder to pull through. So I just taken one stitch through. Now I'm going to go ahead very very close to that that stitch that I just did I'm going to take another stitch right there when I'm starting off I take about two to three stitches right next to each other and then I begin spacing my stitches out so you're just looping the whip stitch is really just looping it in and out in a circle like a spiral so I'm going to start spacing them out now and I just grab a very little pinch of fabric with my needle. Let's see if I can show you. Sorry, here, right there. So just a very little pinch of fabric between my needle, and then you're going to pull it through. Now, when you start spacing these, you'll get into a rhythm as you do it, and you'll find that you do probably the same amount of stitches per side. So you may even want to count when you first start and just find, I go about an eighth of an inch apart for each stitch. And as you go, you'll get faster and faster. I'm going really slow on camera right now. I'm just taking a little pinch of fabric as I go. And you keep doing that. And if you look, the, the stitches are kind of at an angle. Since I'm progressing forward about an eighth of an inch per stitch, they will go at a bit of an angle as you go. One of the things that I really um, enjoy about hand piecing and doing English paper piecing by hand is that it allows me to get out of my sewing room, which I spend plenty of time in, stop staring at the computer and um, get downstairs, spend time with my family. We can sit on the couch. I can watch the kids play. I can also take it to the park with me. I can take it to the beach. I can take it with me wherever I go. And you can use it in the car. You don't have to have your machine and it's kind of relaxing. Um, it's a very easy, you're doing the same thing over and over, so you don't have to think very, very hard. It's not extremely difficult. And it's a wonderful way to piece a quilt together. And I'm usually not this slow. I'm going fairly slow right now. You'll find that you'll get used to the tools that you're using, like the needle that I'm using is a lot smaller. So when I'm approaching the end here, I am going to go ahead, like I said, and I take about 
two or three stitches in place on the corner to kind of lock stitch my stitches. So that's two and then three. Now what I'm going to do on my last one is I'm going to actually put my needle through the loop and pull it to create just a little knot and I'm done. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching our hexagons together in columns. So I would stitch this hexagon, the next one, and then I'll put a next one, next one, next one, and I will create one long strip or column of hexagons. Then we will piece the columns together one column, two column, as we go. So when you're doing this, if you don't want to cut your thread, you can actually just move on and start stitching right here, and then you can trim that later. And you don't really need to tie knots uh, starting and finishing. Um, if you stitch three times in place, then you should be good and nothing's going to come apart. So when you're all done, you can go ahead and take off your painter's tape and you have your two pieces stitched together.